the increases we've seen in cyber espionage, as well as the amount of incidents. Um, looking at the diverse infrastructures that customers are trying to deal with protecting, whether that means we've got multiple um, types of operating systems running, whether that's Windows, um, looking at virtualized environments, looking at Linux in the environment, um, all the different combinations that we have from endpoint, looking at how can we address those threats in a, in a proven formation way that, that addresses not only the incursion, the infection, infestation, exfiltration, and inoculation. And that is not easy to say four times fast. Um, but one of the things that we do have within the product is looking at how do we address each of those um, different pillars through superior protection, incredibly high performance, and actually being able to orchestrate our response going forward. One of the things that's really important when we start talking about where the technology is um, and, and how we're being preventative, the ability for us to look at big data analytics, and a lot of people talk about big data. And one of the reasons we wanted to include this um, slide, when we talk about our global intelligence network, the amount of data that Symantec sees, um, the, the lines of code that we're able to analyze, really is one of those foundational components that helps us with all of our security products across um, our product portfolio. But when you think about what that actually means to you as our partners and, and then to our customers, is that we're seeing more threats every single day. Um, we've got the largest civilian cyber intelligence network, and, and people want to make maybe some claims about that, but I think what we're able to do in actually looking at the attack sensors, the number of countries that we can see into, um, when we talk about um, web attacks being blocked, the insight that we have and the ability to then be preventative in um, stopping threats from coming in, but also rolling that information up. When you start thinking about technologies like artificial intelligence or machine learning, all of that starts with a foundation of how much we know, how much we see, and then being able to translate that into our products. And, and so want to make sure that we're calling that out because I think that's a really key differentiator when we start talking um, about the new technologies that are in the product. One of the things, too, that I, I know can be challenging, and I spend um, a lot of time here in, in the Americas um, with our di distribution partners, our channel partners, is that sometimes when we have improvements in our products, it can blur some of the lines that we have with existing um, products within the endpoint family in particular. It, it's a huge uh, market for us. It has been for, for many years. So I wanted to take a, a minute just to help maybe define the spaces or the running lanes that these products play in. Endpoint protection, I, I think, has been, as far as this version, the on-premise, maybe more of that commercial enterprise space, um, it's still going to play in that lane. But we've had some additions, um, in particular our Semantic Endpoint Protection Cloud product, which is brand new to the market, that tends to maybe blur some lines. Um, I think the best case scenario, when you look at where those products fit. Um, I would say Semantic Endpoint Protection Cloud is definitely going to be more of a fit for your customers that may be more of a small business, a commercial business, have more um, maybe IT specialists that probably do more than just that as their primary job. Um, they may not be dedicated IT specialists. When we get into endpoint protection, especially version 14, when we're dealing with um, environments that may be more enterprise focused, that have multiple um, OSs operating, especially getting Mac and Linux into the environment, um, virtualized, whether it's Hyper-V or VMware, that's going to be an endpoint protection on-premise deployment. Um, and, and we've, def we've got some assets that are coming out with this launch. Um, we'll touch on some of the resources at the end. And, but one of those is um, a comparison matrix that will help you have conversations with your customers and looking at what does their environment look like, what are they trying to protect, um, what are their goals, and I think that that can help you have a really good conversation um, about the products and how they fit into their environment. Other thing, too, that I think is important it, it, we keep trying to build on is, is what is the value that, that we as Semantic are trying to bring to you, our partners, um, and looking at driving um, new opportunities. When we look at where the product fits, I think um, competitively, and we'll give you guys some, um, some testing that's been done on the products to help you kind of see where that sits, 
but also to have really good conversations with your customers, um, which a lot of times products may start at the endpoint. That could be the foundational approach that customers are taking. Endpoint protection is absolutely a necessity. It's not something they can just look to add on um, as, as a secondary thought. But looking at then conversations we can have potentially around data loss prevention. Um, we have endpoint encryption, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, looking at getting into data center security. And also we've got some um, additional opportunities with, it, with advanced threat protection, especially around EDR, which we'll cover today, but also having that conversation um, as organizations want to become um, more preventative and be even more responsive in a shorter window of time, looking at the opportunity to add advanced threat protection um, into their environment. We are working really, really hard um, in doing our um, Integrations, we, I'm, I'm hoping you guys are all aware, we did an acquisition of um, Bluecoat and looking at bringing those um, programs together for our partner programs and are looking at making um, new programs available for you, our partners, whether that's improvements in um, the partner programs or looking at offering other specialties um, like uh, a SaaS offering. So hopefully there's a lot of new things happening within Symantec, especially around um, what we're doing and, and how we want to work with you, our partners, to bring really great things to market, including new products or newly improved products like we have with Symantec Endpoint Protection 14. I get really excited. This is probably the largest launch we've done of Endpoint Protection in five years. So there is a ton of information. I know this is going to be uh, you know, 45 minutes goes by really fast. Um, so there will be a ton of assets available for you on our PartnerNet site that you can leverage. We'll give you guys a list of those in a minute. But kind of the overarching um, components to what we wanted to do is provide you with superior protection, incredibly high performance, and the ability to do orchestrated response. And in looking at those three buckets, I'm going to turn this over to our phenomenal Teresa, um, who's been working on this project for a while now and has some really great insight that she'll be able to share with you. So, Teresa, over to you. Great. Thanks, Kat. Um, so what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about the product. And we're going to deep dive into the different um, new features that we're offering in Step 14. But before we do that, we wanted to talk a little bit about what we call the attack chain. Um, you've heard it called the kill chain. We, it, it's actually really important to understand because it's um, one of the unique features of SEP14 that we are able to protect across the entire attack chain. Everybody has different verbiages for this that they use. Um, so what we tried to do is we tried to put it in a little more layman's terms, and we used medical terms because we felt that that was most intuitive to people. So. There's different ways that you will get infected, for example. Um, from a virus standpoint, from your computer, it could be web, it could be email. That's the incursion phase. You're not, once you actually become infected, that is obviously the infection phase. Now, that could be a file that is delivered to your endpoint. That could be an attack on memory. That could be a rootkit. And then, once that infection is there, a lot of times it will try to spread laterally. That's what we consider to be the infestation or exfiltration phase because in many cases it will call out to its command and control center or it will try to exfiltrate important data. Now, once you've got an infection, what you really want to do is you want to inoculate yourself. You want to remediate the, the risk or the breach. So that's our inoculation phase. And we have many different technologies in Step 14 that allow you to orchestrate a response on the endpoint using these technologies to remediate that breach. And from a visual standpoint, we wanted to show you how all of our technologies work together. And you can see that these are all the technologies we have in SEP14. On the top, we've got our incursion phase, so we'll, we'll be able to um, detect threats if they're coming in from the network or through the firewall. And about Honestly, about half of the threats that organizations see are coming, are caught at this phase. Then we have our standard and you know infection phase. You hear a lot about our antivirus products. Then we have our infestation in phase. You can see where we've highlighted the new technologies 
the ones that are marked new are truly new technologies. But we've also enhanced other technologies. So for example, our behavioral analysis, our sonar, we've added enhancements. So